I happen to be a silly pseudonym, and we're going to cheat today to explore some dying star. Let's see how crazy we can make a dying star, shall we? So, I will use the debug mode. F7, in case you're unfamiliar, we'll activate it. And I'm also going to start giving ourselves a few tiny upgrades. So B, after activating debug mode, will give you an upgrade point. N gives you a reroll. And you can actually hit Control N and get 10 rerolls at a time. So let's see what we can get. Uh, we're going to take hidden power, so the weapon doesn't matter. Since we're going to try Dying Star, Halo makes a great deal of sense. And we want to make things a little bit faster, so we're going to take the research body so we can banish mods we do not wish to see. Revelation helps out. Or Solar Heart certainly helps as a start. Do I want it yet, though? I think I want to look for a Chaotic Ambition. Ataraxia does give us more global damage. That could be useful. But no, we just want Dying Star, right? Yeah. I'll take this Winnow instead. Don't need any of you. Nah, we don't need this. Nor this. Do we want deflagration? Kind of makes sense with a Dying Star build. No. We're just going Dying Star. Well, we actually might need it because we need ways of dealing damage to the enemy that's not a weapon. So that could be a horrible mistake. Already seeing voids show up. No, don't need you orbs. Don't need you spontaneous generation. Don't need you to show durability. Don't need you void, but I can't manage you. Don't need transmog. Allies. Massachism. Ray of Fire. I'll take a bravado. Don't need regeneration, but do want armor, do want candescence. Don't need the double tap. I'll take the channeling. I'll take the core shielding. I'll take the candescence. I'll take the dying star. Igniting everything near us. More ignite duration and burn damage. Seems useful. Don't really care about the rebuke. I'll take the corrosion down to purification and purge. Don't really need the purge since we don't have deflagration. We're just banishing everything. Hypermetabolism. Don't need. CAC ambition times three. I will happily take that. Don't need you, Maelstrom. Don't need you, Galvanic. Don't need you, Granja. Defiance. Purge. Don't need Mines. Don't need Heavy Caliber. Don't need Outrage Rattle. Don't need Efficiency. Don't need Propulsive Munitions. Why are you even here, Explosive Growth? Why are you even here? Don't need Farsight. We'll take Chaotic Ambition so we can make sure that we have something in our mob pool. That would be useful. Banish you. Banish Polar Inversion. Banish Skirmish. Take Solar Heart. 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 And again. And again. And again. Yep. And again. And again. And again. Mastery should have banished you. Take the Solar Hearts. Banish the Mastery. Take the Solar Heart. Take the Solar Heart. Alright, so. We are now experiencing a 1,224% burn damage modifier. So this is a um, this is a more powerful than average dying star. I think it would be safe to say. So remember, with Solar Heart, we get plus two percent burn damage for every wild mod we own, and we have a lot of Solar Hearts. So that is, yeah. 2% times however many solar hearts we have.
pretty easy thus far. Let's see how... Oh yeah. Spitfire did not last long. Not long at all. Let's hurry things along, shall we? Let's get some more waves in here. That's the O button, by the way. The letter O. Not zero, the number. Yeah, kill things pretty quickly. Dying Star generally feels a bit weak to me, even with Solar Hearts, but I suppose if you have enough Solar Hearts, well, it doesn't really matter then, does it? Start a few more waves early. Do want to get to Omega. Sadly, racers still have their shields. Alright, Celestials, and goodbye Celestial, lovely to see you do right. Oh, we have another point, well, more burn damage, yeah, 1,300, alright, alright. Now, here's a fun question, how does Omega handle all this? Probably not long if we get in the middle. Actually longer than I thought it would. Decent size health pool to work through. But it didn't last long. Certainly faster than most fights where it goes. A boost. We definitely need that recovery. Yep, we definitely need that recovery. All right, let's try to hurry things a bit more. Come on, more waves. Give me more waves. Let's get to Warbringer and Scion and Seraph and all of our friends. Yeah, even with all these solar hearts, you can tell it does good damage, don't get me wrong, but it's not it's not going to be some amazingly wonderful insta-kill everything on screen kind of setup. It's powerful. Again, don't get me wrong, it is powerful. But it's not Super duper deluxe. Destroy everything on sight. Powerful. Alright. Wave 58. Shouldn't take long to get to Scion now. Alright, Scion. You can tell how much proximity really affects things. We're doing decent damage from farther away, but if we get really close, I mean really close, the burn damage really ramps up. Which is a good lesson in how much proximity affects things. It might ignite things in a huge radius, but you still want to get close to enemies if you want Dying Star to really rack up some decent numbers. Even when we have as many burn damage modifiers, boosting our burn damage as we do right now. It's still much better to get up close and personal to enemies. Once again, see how the numbers change based on proximity. Now some of that's cheating. Corrosion is spraying our burn damage around. So some of those numbers are just corrosion, doing corrosion things. It's not about the dying star of itself applying all that damage to each segment individually.
even more burn damage. We're up to now 15. 1500, not bad, not bad, not bad. Come closer, my friend, come closer. No drama when you can't take damage, I'm afraid. But that's okay. I'll try to make this a quick, easy episode. And then people who don't read the thumbnail can say, well, it must be a very quick and easy one where he just dies. How many people actually watch this without seeing the thumbnail? I'm guessing very, very few people just click it at any time, no matter what. I'm guessing that's not how it works at all. Yeah, we did it pretty fast, but once again, corrosion is helping us out. Even without deflagration, you put apply enough burn damage, corrosion does the work for you. All right, let's get some more waves, shall we? Shielder can shield you only for so long, Juggernaut. Only for so long. Come on. Come on. There we go. See, even now, Juggernaut, that champion version at least, could sustain a fair amount of damage. Now, of course, it was helped by the Cherub providing a shield. But still, this is still not a build, even with this high modifier, where you can just kill enemies from across the arena. You gotta actually put in a little bit of work if you want to do it quickly. Actually make us get up close and personal, how rude of them. Alright, Seraph, how are you going to handle this? We'll get a little corrosion damage thanks to all of your little friends. But yeah, we're doing okay damage just over here. But not a huge amount. So it's on fire, but the damage ain't crazy. It ain't crazy. Let's get it closer this time and see. Yeah, shield, our shield is kind of cheating for us a bit. But let's just get this close. Go away, shielder. Okay, now let's get this close. Turn up our burn damage to 1744%. You see, we really Yeah, even using my shield Seraph has a big enough health pool that we can just Sit here for a minute and still not kill it That's why Dying Star does feel a bit weak to me it requires you to get close to really apply a lot of burn damage. So it's not something that you can really use by itself. Maybe if you apply it with something like... Hmm... Orbital Shield. Something else. It really feels like it needs something else. And this, of course, is with... Uh, da, 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 da. Without Hidden Power. If we did have Hidden Power, we could do a little bit more damage. So that should be... That should be also recognized. But we also do have Bravado, which is providing some boost. And we also have... Well... 
all these rerolls. So these rerolls are also providing us with what? With the research body. Increase power ups, increase, yeah, just holding shields for each reroll. We don't have the da, 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 ataraxia. That's what I'm thinking of. Ataraxia and hidden power would make this better. But still, under its default setting, it's not that great. It's okay. Bonk. Anyway, I just wanted to demonstrate this. I think I will just explode. And enjoy the fireworks. <laughs> and of course, when you use the debug mode, you get no score. You can see the normal stats, but no official score. Alas, alas. <laughs> anyway, I thought that would be interesting to show off. As I said, if you want to try it, feel free to do so. Hidden power and uh, ataraxia would make it stronger, but it's just not horribly strong by itself. Still, pretty fun to try, pretty fun to observe exactly what it looks like and how it works. But now, I shall thank you all for stopping by.